Okay, so now we're going to talk about the second topic. Are the Gospels good historical sources for learning about the life of Jesus? So let's try to bring up one topic and talk about that. So okay. what would you like to say about that? Are the Gospels good historical sources for learning about the life of Jesus? I would say yes. Uh, recent scholarship uh, by Richard Balcom and, and others have, have found that as you look at the genre of the literature of the Gospels, that the uh, historical biography, that's my first point. Well, I would, say, I would say obviously they're meant to be historical, but I would say it's, it's fantasy. I mean, it's not, I, don't, I don't believe it's realistic to believe that Jesus walked on water or turned water into wine. Okay, well, I think the, the, the most important thing, a couple of things is that you're, you're a philosophical naturalist, and that has a bearing on the way you look at the literature. And, but I was a Christian. See that. Yeah, but I was like a Christian for a long time. Pardon? I was a Christian for a long time. I was a Christian almost all my life. For over 25 years, I was a born-again evangelical Christian. That, that's a subjective argument, sir. No, but, but you're saying you're, you're into, saying we're going, I have. We're going into the we're going into the scholarship the scholarship of uh, New Testament studies and historical Jesus studies. Raynan, Oltzman, John Ives, Wise, Albert Schweitzer, the New Atheist, all of them. I've had presuppositions where they, they, they've been inventing a Jesus of themselves. And if you're a philosophical naturalist, you're coming with a pre-bent presupposition that's going to influence your understanding of the data. We need criteria, objective criteria, that we can assess the historical Jesus. Well, let me, so let I would me, like to ask you, what, is, what okay. is your historical criteria? Well, let me ask you a specific question about the Gospels. Well, I've asked you. I've asked you first. You need to answer. The specific criteria is to, when you want to look at a historical figure, you have to look at all available writings and any kind of evidence whatsoever. It could be writings, it could be artifacts. You can look at anything and, and then try to piece it together to see what makes the most sense. And well, with the Gospels, what, hold on now, with the Gospels, for example, you have these Gospels, which Bart Ehrman, who's a Bible scholar, says they are actually written anonymously. Uh, Thomas Paine said, you know what, here's a woman who says, uh, I, I'm a virgin, but I'm pregnant. And, not, and he says, you know what, you can believe that if you want to, that this woman is pregnant by God. But, you know, it's not even her saying it. It's somebody else writing that about them. It's hearsay about hearsay. And not only is it just hearsay, but we don't even know who wrote the Gospels. You know, the Catholic Church okay. maybe said it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but the scholars will tell you, they just, they just put names on there. They don't know who wrote these Gospels. Well, you're, you're, not, you're not really in touch with the scholarship of the times, uh, Bernie. Um, but just, just as a matter of interest, if you, read, if you read Sam Harris, Dawkins, Michael Onfray, the new atheists like Richard Carrier, uh, people like that, their methodologies are very subjective, and they're not really in touch with... with with current scholarship on historical Jesus studies. I asked you for a criteria, and you didn't know what the criteria were, like the criteria of similarity. Things like that that you need to understand if you're going to be uh, competent in this scholarship. Well, well when you ask um, about criteria, what you're saying is, there's, are, are you saying there's no, this is what I think you're arguing, there is no original manuscript, and they have all these manuscripts from different times and places, and they try to piece them all together to find out what the original is. Is that what you're talking about for criteria? No, when I'm asking you, we're, we're, talking about, we're talking about good historical sources. So, for example, when we're looking at the life of Jesus, right, we, we, we use criteria like, for example, the criteria of multiple attestation. But all you, so all you, look, have, all example, you have, all you have for Jesus... Me, let me just finish, let me finish, because this is important. We can look, say, at the claim of the Gospel that it says that Jesus died on a cross, for example. And then we can look at other sources outside the Bible, for example. We can look at um, Josephus and Tacitus. No, no, no. Because no, we no, have no, multiple no. attestation, we can say that, no. as Dominic Crossan said, he was a, a skeptic that come Jesus on. died on the cross. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, come on. Outside of the Gospel, what yeah. evidence is there for the life of Jesus? Tell me one document well, outside the Gospel. Tell me one. Well, that he died on the cross, for example. Um, uh, Victor uh, Gomez, uh, World Authority on Dead Sea Scrolls, who recently died, uh, talks about the scholarship. Wait a minute, the scholarship on Josephus. And th there's a passage in Josephus that clearly states that Christ died on that cross. The vast majority of scholars would agree 
that, that passage of where it says he died on the cross is genuine Josephus. And yeah, Mayor, and you, okay, so you know... It's, you, not on my side. You know that, you know, there's a... You, with that. He okay. hated that. First, first off, you know there's a part of Josephus that is fabricated, right? Where it talks about him being the, the Messiah and all that stuff, right? Well, I know the scholarship on, that, on the Josephus passage very well, right. and I can tell you now that the vast majority of scholars, there's three camps of scholars on, on Josephus. Let me, let me ask the you something about... Which, uh, which, let me just finish, because okay. people need to hear about the scholarship, because the atheists don't like people to know the full scholarship of it. If you look at the scholarship, there's a small percentage on the left that say it's not Josephus, but it was all in, put in by some monk of the 3rd century. Then on the right... There are, there are a few scholars that say that it's fully Josephus, but the bulk of scholarship would say that most of that passage about Jesus is Josephus, and that passage in particular about the cross is clearly Josephus. Well, the scholarship, sir. Let me ask you a question about Josephus. Was Josephus an eyewitness of all this? Um, Josephus, if you look at, the, you've got to look at context. If you look at the first century, and if you read uh, Josephus' book, on his historical method, and you look at how historians worked in the first century, they based their work off Polybius, which was 200 BC. 200 BC, Polybius said, if you're going to be a historian, use eyewitness material. So Josephus, as a first century historian, mimicking Polybius, would try to get as much eyewitness material as he possibly could. And if you read Josephus, his scholarship is absolutely vast. Okay, let me... Vast. Let me... Let me, the, the most you can say, okay, number one, Josephus was not an eyewitness, right? I, w I, wouldn't, well, I wouldn't say he was an eyewitness, but I would say as a historian, he knew that it was important, okay. it was vital. What I'm trying to say, to, though, is... If to base his material on eyewitnesses I understand and that. multiple attestations, I understand God, that. he based it on Polybius. I understand that, but we agree that Josephus was not an eyewitness, correct? It was not an eyewitness, but that doesn't negate what he's saying, and that it I'm just seeing what, what I'm just seeing what we could agree with so far. We agree that he was not an eyewitness, right? He wasn't an eyewitness, okay. although he came and from Galilee. And, and Josephus, he lived not about the time just after Jesus. Josephus says nothing at all about changing water into wine. Uh, says nothing at all about Jesus walking on the water. All that stuff. All he says is that there is a guy named Jesus who is crucified. He does, not, he does not say Jesus rose from the dead, obviously, because Josephus would not believe that. So, I mean, no, at, at he, the best, all no, he's... But, at no, the best, all... Said, jo well, no, let me say something. Let me, uh, let me just say you've something. You've got to be intellectually hold, honest. Okay, Bernie, hold on. The question. Can I say you something? You said, give me one fact. And I gave you one fact. Okay. And that is that Christ died on a cross, and I'm giving you Josephus. And the vast majority of scholars don't disagree with it. And the basis of Josephus is based on eyewitness material, because that's how... He and first century writers try to do their writing. They try to have multiple attestations. Yeah. It's quite remarkable if you look into the methods. It's, no, it's not a big deal at all that uh, Jesus died on the cross. There's lots of false messiahs that were killed on the cross. That's not something rare. That's okay, not something which unique. One? So you just claim which one? Which one? Um, you said lots have died on the cross. Which yeah. One? Yeah. There's a link. Well, I'm not. Sh uh, this is just what I heard. I'm not sure about all the it's crucifixions. Yeah, well, we can't go but I, but I can't, I can't, can't hold on, let me talk. Let me finish, let me finish, bro. let me finish. I can tell you there are a whole bunch of uh, false messiahs. You can find them on the internet. And one I was going to bring up, I was going to bring up. I've looked at them all and they're significantly different from Jesus. There's you a, can go into detail about it if you want. Well, of course they're different than Jesus, but there's one guy who like led a rebellion for a couple years too, and the Romans came out and slaughtered them all. There's a whole bunch of false Jewish messiahs. That that part is odd. What's that? Dying on the cross. Dying on the cross. Killing on the cross was a typical Roman crucifixion procedure for death penalty. There's two other people, even in the, in the gospel. There's two other people with him. They weren't claiming to be Messiah. They were killed on the cross. There's people, all kinds of people were killed on the cross. So Jesus, well, Michael, Jesus, Michael was, Onfrey, a, Jesus was an atheist. Uh, Michael Jesus, Onfrey, an atheist, actually said that people didn't die on the cross. Uh, he's a major philosopher in France. Michael I'm Onfrey, just saying, French according, I'm just saying, according in, to in the, the atheist, can I finish? Can I finish? In an atheist manifesto said, Jesus' existence has not been historically established. 
And then he says that nobody died on the cross in first century uh, uh, Jerusalem. That's a major French philosopher. That's the typical scholarship of atheists. They're not okay. grounded in what's happening in modern scholarship on historical Jesus studies. Okay, so I just wanted to, we're out of time on this one too, but I just want to say that Josephus is not an eyewitness and all he's doing at best is reporting what other people have told to him. And he's, he's, not, he's not verifying anything of the gospel. All the gospel stories, he has nothing to do with that. Well, well, I asked you for a testation, historical testation method, and you didn't really understand what that was about. And secondly, I gave you cut and get solid scholarship on Josephus, primary source detail, and then I gave you the cut and get scholarship. And what you've given us, you said people died on the cross, but it was very nebulous. You didn't give any information or detailed information. Josephus doesn't say anything about the life of Jesus. Okay, that, that's an assertion, sir. Of course, he doesn't. He, Josephus doesn't talk about Jesus changing water in the wine. There's all these stories in the gospel. G, Josephus doesn't say anything about those whatsoever. Bernie, Bernie, bro, I love you, mate. I admire, I respect you. But think about it. What you're saying. What is the basic? What is the basic Christian message? It is about Jesus Christ dying on the cross. That's the major thing. No, 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 no. The major thing is he rose from the dead. Bernie, Bernie, please let me finish. The and the dead, yeah. But the the point what I'm getting at is the basic plausibility structure. The mathematician, I think it's Hacking, Professor Hacking, talks about plausibility structure. You've got a good plausibility structure, and your historical. Uh, your historical data is good, and, and there's a good plausibility structure that he died on a cross, and, 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 and you're not following the scholarship that's on that particular topic. Okay, so we need to move on to the next topic now. Uh, this next topic is 